Did you know that you are a true speedy Gonzales? After all, you have covered no less than 6,300 kilometers in the last 10 seconds. There is a simple reason why you are not out of breath despite this rapid sprint. Strictly speaking, it is not you, but the local group, together with the Milky Way and the Earth, that is racing through space at a speed of 630 kilometers per second. But how did our parent supercluster of galaxies end up on such a breakneck course? And where are we headed anyway? The first speed camera photo was taken in the 70s. In fact, it was back then that astronomers first managed to determine the speed of our galactic home using the cosmic microwave background radiation. In principle, the background radiation, which originated about 380,000 years after the birth of the cosmos and still fills the entire universe today, is considered outstanding evidence for the Big Bang Theory. And yet the conclusions about speed derived from it also left some fundamental questions unanswered. There is no question that the first precise measurement of our galaxy's speed was an important astronomical milestone. But in the same breath, it also seemed a little disconcerting, because after all, at first nobody knew exactly why the Milky Way was moving so fast. A significant part of our speed could be explained by the expansion of the universe, which in turn is described by the Hubble flow, or in other words, the associated drifting apart of galaxies. Gravitational interactions between the Milky Way and its closest galactic neighbors, such as Andromeda, also contributed to the speed decryption. And yet a significant piece of the puzzle still seemed to be missing. No wonder. After all, we seemed to be racing at a speed and in a direction that we couldn't fully explain. And it also seemed as if our entire galaxy was being thrown off course by a gigantic distant structure. The bottom line, however, was that not only our Milky Way had been sucked into the pole of this ominous something. No, it affected every galaxy in our corner of the cosmos. Expressed in numbers, this means nothing more than that we are dealing here with a mysterious galaxy stream that extends over more than 800 million light years. In light of this attractive force, the experts decided to christen the object responsible for it the Great Attractor. And consequently, the task at hand was to reveal the true identity of that attractor. But what brute force could be capable of drawing entire galaxies over hundreds of millions of light years into its orbit? Well, the simple answer to this question was gravity. But to attract 100,000 galaxies over such vast distances, the great attractor had to be unimaginably huge and massive. On the trail of the great attractor, True to the motto, it's worth a try, astronomers first tried to examine the Great Attractor with the help of telescopes and quickly realized that this approach would not be successful. The spiral structure of the Milky Way, which is thought to contain approximately 100 billion stars concentrated along a plane 1,000 light years thick, put blinkers on the research view. In detail, the Great Attractor lurks in the so-called zone of avoidance and thus in an area of the sky where structures in the optical spectrum are only weakly visible or not visible at all. And so it came about that the true nature of the Great Attractor initially remained a great cosmic secret. The experts could only study it indirectly by examining its gravitational influence on the surrounding galaxies. But at least it was possible to determine its approximate position and estimate its rough mass and we knew that it slumbers 150 to 250 million light-years from Earth in the constellation Norma and weighs an incredible 10 quadrillion solar masses. Despite this, for a long time we knew of no structures in the universe with such an imposing mass. But advances in radio and infrared telescopes finally allowed us to see through the zone of avoidance and take a look at the areas beyond it. Sure enough, Astronomers found more galaxies there, and lots of them. In this case, lots means that the Great Attractor is nothing more than a colossal supercluster, and thus a huge collection of galaxy clusters, which are among the largest known structures in the cosmos. And yet, this galactic gigantism also raises a number of profound questions, especially regarding the nature and cause of the Great Attractor. In 2016, Researchers using the Australian Parkes Radio Telescope succeeded in shedding at least a little more light on the cosmic darkness. 
And while the scientists were examining a certain spectral line that originates from glowing hydrogen objects beyond the Milky Way, they were able to identify 883 galaxies in the zone of avoidance, around 30% of which were previously completely unknown. In addition to individual galaxies, the region under investigation also contains three galaxy clusters and two previously unknown galaxy clusters. And given that an average galaxy contains about 100 billion stars, we can begin to imagine the unimaginable mass regions we are dealing with here. And while our Milky Way, as mentioned, is hurtling towards the Great Attractor at a speed of over 200 million kilometers per hour, a few years ago, the experts were able to make another astonishing discovery. Not only are we being drawn toward the Great Attractor, we are also being pushed away at the same time. The Mysterious Center of Repulsion This finding came as a surprise to experts, to say the least. For a long time, the influence of the Great Attractor was considered the main cause of the collective movement of galaxies. But then, at a distance of 700 million light years, astronomers discovered an even larger structure. Located in the constellation Centaurus, the Shapley Supercluster is the largest known collection of galaxies of any kind, and the powerful gravitational forces at work here even ensure that the galaxies belonging to it do not move further apart despite the expansion of the universe. And yet, even the existence of this cosmic superstructure was not enough to fully explain the motion of the Milky Way and its neighboring galaxies. All the more important, therefore, was the fact that the research team led by Yehuda Hoffman of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem uncovered a few years ago, because in fact, the experts were to uncover yet another force influencing our home galaxy on its breakneck journey through space in the course of their work. To understand the results of the study, we need to briefly recall that our Milky Way belongs to the local group, which in turn is part of the Virgo supercluster. This in turn is part of the 520 million light year Laniakea supercluster. Well, at least that's what we thought until now, but more on that later. In the neighborhood of Laniakea is the Shapley supercluster, and for their study, the researchers had reconstructed the movement of galaxies in our supercluster using various telescope data. And on this basis, they created a flow field of our cosmic environment, which maps the lines of motion and velocities of its structures. And surprisingly, this model showed that the lines of motion of the galaxies are by no means only converging on the Shapley supercluster. In fact, there is also a region in the opposite direction where a noticeable concentration of motion could be observed. However, this concentration apparently has no attractive effect but rather the characteristic of repelling all objects. Called a dipole repeller, this low-density region thus pushes the Milky Way around and to a considerable extent. The experts' investigation showed that the influence of the dipole repeller is almost as great as that of the Great Attractor. And while the cosmic shove is characterized by significantly fewer galaxies and clusters than other areas of space, this was the first time that researchers had ever identified such a source of repulsion in space. The Impossible Voids Just how much remains to be learned about the overarching structure of the cosmos in the future is demonstrated by the surprising discovery made a few months ago. According to this, our Milky Way might not actually belong to the Laniakea supercluster after all but instead directly to the significantly larger Shapley supercluster. At least, this is suggested by a new mapping of the gravitational catchment areas in the local universe. But what about the dipole repeller? Well, it's complicated here too, because, strictly speaking, it shouldn't exist at all. This is for the simple yet profound reason that the standard model simply does not provide for such underdense regions or voids. Instead, matter should actually be evenly distributed throughout space. And yet, the voids seem to be there, but that's not all. In fact, it is possible that our Milky Way, along with its cosmic neighborhood, is located inside such a low matter bubble. This constellation could also explain the confusing Hubble tension, the fact that the universe is actually expanding faster than it should theoretically be allowed to. In this context, the significantly higher density of matter beyond the edge of the bubble, with its gravitational forces, 
would cause the structures inside to move away from us faster than one would actually expect. But while astronomers are still debating this theory, the final question is what will actually happen when we finally arrive at the Great Attractor? Well, the perhaps somewhat sobering answer is nothing at all, because we will never arrive at it. Even the breakneck speed of more than 2 million kilometers per hour is not enough to win the race against the accelerated expansion of the universe. In reality, the distance between us and the Great Attractor will actually increase steadily, and so it happens that we remain bound to our local group by gravity, while the rest of a distant day disappears into the dark expanse of space. And so that you can find us in the dark expanses of YouTube in the future, you can now simply press the subscribe button, click the thumbs up, and join our community now so you'll never miss a new video from us again. We'll see you soon.